What's going on all my Talonites? It's your boy Talonmaster J here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to bring you guys our week 7 battle of the FBL. But ladies and gentlemen, before we get into that battle, I have to be honest with you guys. You guys have probably been wondering, because FBL is a upload required league and failure to upload does run the risk of potentially if you make playoffs, you forfeit your playoff spot. Fully understand that, fully get it. Uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, as Bishmi and Kiwi know, because they were, I was in constant contact with them about it, uh, this battle goes live on August the 20th on my channel. So that'll be two weeks of it. Um, August 6th, we lost my grandmother. She passed away at 95, so there's a reason why I didn't upload my week 5 battle. And... Because I was busy, you know, in mourning of my grandmother because she was the grandmother that I really knew all my life. I mean, my mom's mother, the only memory I have of her, and I've said this plenty of times to my friends and to even my parents, even my mom forgot it, was the, the only memory I have of her mother was her mother going on a gurney while I was playing with my Kinex roller coaster set that they got me for Christmas. Um, but... Because of that, guys, I didn't upload my Week 5 battle. And also because of that, I didn't play my Week 6 battle against Shiny Shuriken. He has since uh, dropped from the league because he had a lot of work stuff to focus on. Fully understand that. Um, but because of that, we didn't upload last week, so we didn't have a Week 6 battle. We're going to do a Week 7 battle, ladies and gentlemen. We, uh, we're doing a post-recording. I do have the video courtesy of... TD0, I thank him immensely for the footage because I hit Audacity, but I didn't hit the record on the 4K capture utility. So that's what caused me to, you know, need his side of the battle. But if you guys are ready for this battle, guys, leave a like on this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We're on our way to 300 Talonites on YouTube. We just passed 300 followers over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash TalonmasterJ of where... I'm going to be starting a hardcore Nuzlocke tournament bracket tomorrow on August 21st where we have to play through Pokemon Violet with a Squawkabilly as our starter. And that's not hyperbole. But I kept you guys long enough. Let's get into the battle so I can tell you guys what happened. <laughs> We're back here for the post-com of our battle against TD0, the uh, Seattle Dragonairs. TD is a real good dude, guys. If you haven't gone and checked out his content, he does some real good battling, ladies and gentlemen. So I highly recommend going and checking out his side of the battle. But we're going to get into the searching right now so you guys can see, uh, you know, he's doing like his stuff and everything. Also, we needed a extra comp because... Uh, both of us got really busy with work last week to where we couldn't make a comp uh, for each of us. So we were able to get this one in, both of us. Uh, he, honestly, his team was really scary, by the way, everyone. I can't even stress that enough. His team was stupidly scary. Um, I mean, having the Don fan is one thing, but the rest of his team is just... It's other levels. I mean, TD knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to battling, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, for me to be able to battle him in a league such as the FBL, that's a huge honor. That's a huge privilege. Uh, let me try and skip a little bit so we can get in here. So, now you see that we're getting ready to start the battle and everything. You see, he brought Don Fan, Cyclozar, Baxcalibur, Zamazenta, Miss Magius, and Samurott. Whereas we brought Hisuian Arcanine, Tornadus, Sneasler, Gallade, Zorwark, and Tatsugiri. Now, at first glance, there, ladies and gentlemen, 
our team is sort of similar to our battle against Tari and the Apple Tea Party, the one that we were supposed to upload, but we didn't uh, because of mitigating circumstances. But as you can tell, now his team, he has Terra Electric Baxcalibur. So that's another thing to keep an eye out. Terra Electric Baxcalibur alongside a Cyclozar that can Terra into any type. Uh, also, Baxcalibur can Terra into any type, but I know he uh, tended to run Terra uh, Electric on Baxcalibur because it's just really good. It really, really is. Um, Zamazenta, because he got the crowned Zamazenta, he has to carry the Rusted Shield, and he always has to have that as his item. Uh, Samurott, Miss Magius, good Pokemon. I do have Samurott and TBL. Very good. Uh, already talked about Psychozar, and Don Fan is there because, you know, Don Fan is really good at hazard control. Uh, it can set up hazards, it can spin away hazards. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Um, now, when I led this battle, when I looked at TD's team, and I'll show, and you know, when the battle starts, uh, you'll see it that, you know, I'll lock in and everything. Um, but when I start this battle, I led with Zoroark. I led Zoroark in the form of Tornadus Therium. And you guys will understand my reasoning why I led uh, Zoroark in front of that. So, I, I did take a long time thinking of my, you know, I, how I want to sleep, but I didn't know that, you know, just said, you know what, let's try it. We'll get uh, Zoro uh, as our lead in front of his, whatever Pokemon he brings out first and just go for a U-turn, first turn, try to keep everything up. Uh, also, shout-outs, Medali Gen. Everybody loves Larry. Uh, do you see we led Tornadus, but it's Zoroark. And he led Samurai. I, I don't understand sometimes why in this battlefield some Pokemon fall in. Um, but you see that we go for the U-turn. Now, we were naturally faster than Samurai if it wasn't Choice Scarf. But we get the U-turn off, get some good chip damage on that Samurai. And, you know, now we're thinking, okay, what do we want to do? What do we want to do here? Uh, thinking about, you know, would he go Aqua Cutter? Would he go Ceaseless Edge? Would he go Aqua Jet? Would he go X Scissor? Would he go Sacred Sword? Mega Horn? Who knows? Um, and that's what I was thinking right here was I need to risk something here because I mean now Samurai with his Suian form the sharpness boosted it's it still does stupid levels of damage with Ceaseless Edge but the benefit of it is that it's ninety percent accurate. So like you guys see, I took my risk. I brought in Sneasler. Thinking that he was going to go for Ceaseless Edge. He does go for it. He does hit it. Uh, and he gets his spikes up. So, you know, he gets his one layer of spikes. Now, I need to point out here. This Sneasler. I decided, why not? Let's go with a Choice Scarf Sneasler this week. Just in case. I want to be. I want to ensure that I'm faster than that Cyclos are. I put Sneasler with a Choice Scarf this week. Just for the hell of it. Why not? Um, and what I did on this turn was... I did again. I U-turned out. I definitely U-turned out. I know that's what I did because I figured... Get more damage on him. Maybe even if I'm lucky I can get a KO. And get the switch out. And bring in Tatsugiri for free. Because at this point... My main goal is to remove those hazards. If I get rid of those hazards... Then we're good. As you see, he went for Aqua Jet. We get the U-turn. We end up picking up the KO on the Samurai. So his Samurai's down, and we get Sneasler out. Still has, you know, low health, but it was put in a spot where it can do, you know, it can still affect the tide of the battle. Um, and so now I'm thinking, okay, I really want to, like, do I want to bring Tatsu in? And I'm thinking that's the best play because if I bring Tatsu in, I can bait out the Miss Mages because TD will be thinking, okay, he's going to spin here. Let me block with a ghost type. And that's just my mindset when I was, 
you know, thinking about it, like looking at my team, looking at what, remember what he still had left in my notes was to make sure that, you know, I was able to get uh, his, my ha the hazards removed. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, but then I lock it in. And I say, you know what? Let's get the bait because I have some tech here on this Tatsugiri when I bring it out. And that's the ultimate thing with this Tatsugiri is that by me bringing it out, I'm baiting in his um, Miss Magius. And you also see, I mean, you know, shiny Tatsugiri, of course, why not? And you see that he has Dazzling Gleam on his Miss Magius. Now, this Tatsugiri is a Citrus Berry set. It's got some HP. It can take any uh, Miss Magius' Dazzling Gleam. It can take any one of them. Uh, but the main goal that I had, and you guys will see it when the bat when this move is chosen, because you know TD took his time, wanted to think, you know, okay, he brought this out here. Should I bring Miss Mages in, or maybe should I bring something else in, and then switch this in on the expected rapid spin? But he ends up going with this the Miss Magius, and now I can't spin block. I can't. I can't attack. Uh, miss, I can't attack a ghost type with a normal type. But as I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, Miss Mages does have good special attack. So it might have Dazzling Gleam. Can I live a Dazzling Gleam? And if I do, I'm clicking Mirror Coat on the Tatsugiri. And he ends up going for the Dazzling Gleam. And I'm thinking, please live, please live. And I do live. I live big time. And I get my Citrus Berry off, back up over full 50% uh, health. I go for the Mirror Coat. Mirror Coat, one shot. Miss Magius goes down. Now I can spin. Now I can spin for free. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, now that that's gone, let's get the spin off. But it was dependent on what Pokemon he brought out. Because I really thought that he was going to bring out some of my Bax Caliber, go for like a Dragon Dance, because I... I figured to myself, okay, he's probably really pissed that now he can't uh, spin block. So he's just going to bring out Bax Caliber, Dragon Dance, and clean up house on me. But instead of doing that, he ended up going with Zamazenta, which is fine. Which is perfectly fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say, you know, the decision is bad or the decision is wrong. Whatever. It's completely his decision. Uh, and he brought in Zamazenta. I'm like, okay, let me think on Zamazenta real quick. Uh, because, of course, you know, Dawnless Shield comes out. Now, I'm already screwed up. I'm already up a creek without a paddle as it is. Because Tatsugir, I mean, it's a special attack, but Zamazenta does have good special defense and good HP on top of being a Steel type. So Rapid Spin isn't going to do jack to this Pokemon. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? Let's go and surf while he goes for Iron Defense. Now, he's definitely faster than us. Uh, if I would have Rapid Spawn, I would have been faster for a turn. But I figured, let me get some chip damage off with Surf and then go for the Rapid Spin. Because he ends up going for Trailblaze here, gets his speed boost, which is good on his part. If I get Rapid Spin off, I do... You guys see it right there. Literally, it went from 139... <laughs> just watch it. Went from 139. Just just watch. Just wait a minute, guys. Just wait a minute. It's, it gets good. 139 to 138. A whole 1 HP of damage. That's why Tatsugiri is the best Pokemon in competitive singles. Because it does a whole 1 HP. And it goes down to a body press from a plus 3 Zamazenta. And now... I mean, he got, his, he got his KO on me, which is good, but he can't set up hazards anymore. Unless his Dawn fan had uh, Stealth Rocks. But I end up going to Gallade here because Gallade, one of my Terra Captains, is Terra Ghost. And I say, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I'm clicking Terra Ghost. And I hovered over Substitute and I hovered over Sacred Sword. And I was like, okay, which one is better here? On one hand, Sacred Sword gets the KO. 
On the other hand, the sub gets off for free, and I get the immunity, and he really doesn't have a Pokemon or a move that can hit me, and we end up going for just the straight KO. We go, I clicked Swords Dance here, he went for Body Press, as you can tell, immune, and then Sacred Sword comes out, doesn't even care about the plus three, goodbye, Zamazenta, Sadly, you are still the weaker of the two uh, uh, Doggo Pokemon. Uh, so he brings in Don Fan here. And now I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is where I have to think. And I, like I said, I went for the substitute on this play because I figured maybe he goes for rocks here. I really figured he would go for rocks. Uh, but instead, he ends up going for Earthquake. And as you guys see... I don't have much HP or defense in Gallade, so I can't live in Earthquake. Uh, so, now I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe I can bait out another Earthquake here, and I go into Tornadus here. I switch in Tornadus on the anticipated Earthquake, and we get it. Because, you know, it was a risk. It was a, it was a very risky play to make, because... I mean, like you see, Don Fan had Ice Spinner. It had access to Stealth Rocks, and I just couldn't. I was like, okay, do I really want to click this move? Do I really not want to click this move? But I ended up going with the switch into uh, Tornadus here, and it's not the Zoroark in the form of Tornadus. It's Tornadus in the form of Tornadus. Uh, Ended up taking, you know, a decent amount of time, which, you know, is understandable. Because, you know, I'm trying to think to myself, okay, is this the player? And I, I know what I did. I switched in Tornadus here. It's just, I guess I took a lot longer than I thought. As you see, we switched out. And I bring in Tornadus. I bring in the real one. As Earthquake comes out, and it doesn't affect. Now, this is where it got me. He clicks Ice Spinner. And I go for Icy Wind. Because, you know, I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe he switches in Cyclozar. I could, you know, get it with the Icy Wind lower its speed. But he ends up going for Ice Spinner here. And he does over 50% health. Uh, ends up going for it again. I go for U-Turn because I want to get Tornadus back up to at least some health. Find out it's Rocky Helmet. And fortunately, Regenerator happens. We gotta love Regen. Um... And now I'm thinking to myself, okay, uh, let me bring in Sneasler here and just finish off. But he ends up going for the Ice Spinner and Sneasler, it has terrible physical defense. So it was going, I mean, it was already had bad health as it is, but by sacking off Sneasler, I could bring in uh, something for free and just be able to work around this again. So I bring in Tornadus again. I'm back over 50% health. Uh... And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is definitely something. So I go for Air Slash, and I get the KO. Uh, I did hover over Icy Wind again, but I couldn't tell whether or not his Don Fan was Assault Vest. And that's why I didn't opt for the uh, the, assault, uh, the Icy Wind again, because I just couldn't tell based on the damage when it happened. Now... He brought in Cyclozar here. He left his Terra Captains for last, which I'm just gonna say right now, off rip. The fact that he brought his that he brought his Terra Captains and he saved them both for last. <laughs> kudos, TD. That is brilliant. That is exactly what a gym leader or an Elite Four member or a champion would do, except for Gita because she messed up her uh, Pokemon. It should have been King Gambit with Terra Rock. It should have been. Um. Uh, but I'm thinking here, and I'm just like, okay, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do here? Um, and I think, I really thought he was going to tear a Baxcalibur. More so than he was going to tear a Cyclozar. So, I ended up risking it. I have Focus Blast on my Torn, and I clicked the Focus Blast. And, you know, as they say, if a move is less than 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. Um... And so, he ended up tearing the Cyclozar into Terrifier, which, understandable, makes 
perfect sense. Um, and, you know, again, like I said, I clicked focus buttons. I didn't think he was going to tear those Cyclozar. But his, his, Cyclo, his Cyclozar was faster than Torn. I go for Focus Blast and miss. Which is unfortunate. 70% accurate. It happens. So at this point, I'm like, okay, Tornadus, goodbye. You did your part. You did what you needed to do. Thank you very much for your service. Hit the showers. So because of that, I'm basically trying to think, okay, what can I do here after Tornadus? And that's, you know, after the, the KO and everything on cycles are because it, it gets a ko here i don't i didn't keep tornadoes right because it's just like why would i risk any of my pokemon taking a hit from this cycles are here it would be asinine for me to attack any pokemon with it so i let tornadoes go down and i'm thinking to myself okay he's got terra fire and he's got an ice type i've got a hisuian arcanine so i'm just gonna bring in hisuian arcanine and I'm going to... Now, I risk Head Smash on this Cyclozar. I risk it. Because it's an 80% accurate move. And he gets the knockoff. Gets a critical hit on the knockoff, mind you. And my Muscle Band is removed. Head Smash comes out. Get the 80%. Cyclozar goes bye-bye. And all that's left for him is a Baxcalibur and a Prick. And at this point... I'm thinking, okay, we pretty much have this in the bag. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click Close Combat because I just can't risk the Head Smash miss. I needed uh, Baxcalibur to take damage. And I figured Arcanine did its job. It hit one Head Smash, which is good enough. And Baxcalibur goes for Earthquake. Arcanine goes down, which I'm fine with because by... Arcanine going down, it allowed me to bring in Dice of Honor, Delayed, but you notice, where's the Ghost? Where is the Terra Crown? Where is it? Oh, that's right. It's Zoro. And so, I opt for Zoro to come in, I click Dark Pulse, knock out Baxcalibur, and we end up winning 2-0 over the Seattle Dragonairs. And honestly, guys, this battle was super fun. I mean that entirely. Being able to battle TD is a blast. Being able to battle anybody is a blast. This league is awesome. If you guys get an opportunity to participate in it, please do. Kiwi and Bishmi are two of the coolest dudes out there. And I'm not just tooting their own horn because they're bugs. I'm saying that legitimately. They are two good guys. The only thing they can't do is beat me on the blacktop. Because I will beat them on the blacktop. I'm a, I'm 6'3", 270. All I gotta do is bruise them up in the paint. And they'll and I'll beat them. Uh, but that ends our week 7 FBL battle, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for, for sticking it through. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed this battle. Comment down below. Go thank TD for his footage for our side. And I will see you guys for FBL week 8 with our side of the battle. See you guys.